Hello and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program with me, Matthias Weiss. And today I'm starting a flight to the Moon. Okay, everybody knows the Moon is kind of explored. But actually with uh, the Urkel docking mod I'm doing a kind of Apollo mission. So the first thing at the upper stages you see here is our command and service module. And here's our MUNA lander, or MAM, moon exploration module. And yeah, of course, a big fat booster rocket at the bottom. This mission will be uh, consisting of at least two parts, uh, or maybe three. First part will be bringing this into orbit and flying to the moon entering a 20 or 25 kilometer orbit and the second part will be the landing and maybe a third part for return to Kerbin. Okay, so we are ready. Let's go to the launch pad. Uh, the thing is, uh, as I have to warp for a long time, uh, this will uh, definitely destroy my space station which is in orbit, so I made a safe game and save the persistent file for later use. Okay, we are ready. We have MacJab attached using the Ascent aus Autopilot for a standard 100 km orbit. Engage and yeah, it's dark now, but let's go. And before I go, uh, I have to apologize. The uh, frame rate during launch phase is very low because I'm using a laptop right now. I'm not at home. Okay. Uh, ah, you can see we have the good old standard crew, Bill, Jebediah and Bob. And let's see how this works. We're ready for launch. That's the separation of the first stage and yeah, this is kind of boring because it's always the same. But I want to show that I'm not cheating here. As always, this is a live recording so <laughs> you will see all my mistakes. Starting our gravity turn to 90 degrees, as always. Get into a nice circular orbit. I think I have to apologize for that. Sometimes, I don't know why, sometimes MacJab makes these crazy maneuvers because, yeah, there's too much thrust in the booster stage. Uh, when I made a test flight with this rocket, it was totally fine, but this time I don't know why. Totally spazzed out. But we are lucky nothing disassembled during this maneuver. Just a little bit of fuel wasted here, but we have plenty of that. As a booster stage also has MacJap, so when we detach it, I will deorbit it so we don't leave any waste in space. Uh, 
apoapsis is up to 95 kilometers. So we're almost there. Okay. Engine is cut off and we're warping to apoapsis. Huh, there we are. And almost ready for a second burn to bring us into a nice orbit. Hmm, let's see, can we see the moon? Where is the moon? Oh, it's behind the planet. It's not too bad. Because it reduces time we need to warp later. And that's it. Okay. Try to kill our rotation here. Or maybe we can just eject our booster stage. Uh, let's switch to the booster because we want to bring it down. Periaps 99 kilometers at the moment, but that will change very fast soon. Okay. And that's enough. Look at the map. It goes down to Kerbin. Let's take a sh short look at our space station if it's still in one piece. Yep. Still everything attached. So now it's time to get ready to go to the moon. Phew. Fly around Kerbin first, but first of all, fuel is cut off. Start the engine on our lander, decouple the lander, start the engine on the service module, start RCS, get away a little bit, start a turn. Just swinging around and we'll directly dock again. This is a pretty easy maneuver. Because you'd only need two keys to do that. Oh no, four keys. Swing into one direction, stops the swing with the other directional key. Okay, I think we can. Activate the docking. And just wait until we're docked. Ah, 
as you notice, uh, even though we have MacJab attached here, it sometimes just disables. But the important part, it's still active on the lander, and sometimes while warping, it comes back. But yeah, let's see. Just stabilize a little bit because I want to undock again. Not the true hatch. Okay, just once more. Better. Now the crew hatches are synchronized and yeah, we can disable RCS again and wait for the right time to burn for the moon. bringing our ship into proper position. And wait for the right time for our next burn. Warp here again, bring the nose down a little bit. We can thrust in the right moment when we come back. Oh, no, wait, that's the moon. Already had a perfect timing with de warping. That's great. So, what we do now, everybody knows. Just full thrust to get into a Muna orbit. Yeah, I made a test flight before, and yeah, swinging by into a Muna orbit works. Decoupling works. I had some problems with the landing, but I will figure that out before we make our final attempt. This will not be part of this video. This video is just getting into position, make a quick save and continue from there in the next video. I could do it all in one mission, but uh, my one episode, but the problem is uh, here in Brazil my internet connection is not the best, so the file size would be much too huge. It would take four to six hours to upload it to YouTube. So I will split it into tiny little parts that you all can enjoy at least the first part of this mission. Yeah, both uh, the command and service module and the Munar exploration module, they both have a small engine only, so the actual burn towards the moon takes some time. It takes one big fuel tank with all this uh, payload in front to get there, but we have plenty enough, more than enough to go back later. Okay, apoapsis is reached one million meters.
just correcting my angle a little bit still nice position to go yeah basically this uh, lander design and yeah this craft design in general will be the basis for a Duna lander and but with one exception our service module will have uh, nuclear engines three of them on the sides but only one fuel tank here and before I go to Duna I will dock another two or maybe four uh, big f uh, d two uh, one big fuel tank or two big fuel tanks I mean to it I don't really know I think for a Duna lander two would be sufficient but uh, to go to Jewel later I will take more fuel with me so can yeah, can just add as much fuel as you want because you can just dock into orbit to the fuel oh almost missed okay Good old buck again. Nice. Let's see how it works. Okay. Yeah, I will add more fuel to it to uh, go to Jewel. The good thing is you can refuel your uh, lander in flight. Because with the docking mod, you can transfer fuel, so I can transfer fuel from my uh, service module to the lander and make multiple landings to the Julian moons. That's the plan for the next weeks. But it will ta take some time to find the best craft to do that. Okay, let's just go back from warp and see if everything's still together. I really hate this bug. Okay. Let's see. how we deal with that. Okay, times 1000 is always a little bit tricky. Let's decelerate slowly. Okay, craft is still together. Let's see if we can. Better to encounter. Okay.
Okay, let's try it on with another. Okay, now we have this and this. A Seventy kilometer orbit. Ah, that's the most important thing. Now we exactly know when to dewarp because we don't want to change sphere of influence while in warp or while in the map mode. And the good thing is, yeah, we are don't need to make too many plane change maneuvers for our Munar encounter to get into orbit, which is always a nice thing. Nine minutes. Four minutes. I will uh, leave warp around 30 seconds before we change sphere of influence and go back from map mode to make sure don't have any bugs here. Okay. Make a quick save here. And what I want to do now is because it works, we'll change to my space station, which will be dis disassembled right now. <laughs> yeah, not connected anymore, but I have it, the uh, file saved to go back to our Carpolo craft. Ah, that's what I meant. Our Mac Jab is back. So what we have now is, uh, yeah, we are in Muna orbit. No strange, uh, no strange bugs anymore. We're not propelled into the sun directly, or else crafts are still together and the orbit is still as predicted before or not orbit but our periaps so what we can do now is we can use the orbital operations warp 20 seconds before periaps and just circularize the orbit this is not our final orbit of course because we want to go 20 kilometers above the surface of the moon but right now we can start with this Actually, this comes pretty close to the actual Apollo mission because we started from here and made like an 8 around the moon. I like that. So that's why our inclination is uh, 
almost minus 180 degrees or at minus 180 degrees instead of zero pretty little inclination here so we don't need any plane change maneuvers okay what we don't want to do now is bring our periaps down to 20 kilometers would help if uh, <laughs> Magtap would stop spinning around like an idiot but hey this is not perfect so Very low moon orbit, but it makes it easier for rendezvous later. And same again, warp to periaps. sunset around the moon while we turn around for our second burn to circularize at 15 kilometers I really like the lighting updates they made and the terrain looks pretty awesome right now even though I'm not on maximum details almost there just a delta V of 2 meters per second to burn 1 meter per second oh nice we have the Sun and Kerbin that's a really beautiful picture I think I will take a screenshot here Okay, 15 to 16. Uh, let's give him the last chance for one correction. Ah, that's more than enough. Okay. And the sun is gone. Okay, while we are on the dark side of the moon, our brave crew is getting ready to change into second module and like in the original moon landing we will take two crew members over and of course we need of course we need Jap for the moon landing I can really climb over there that's a bad thing but you can just hover 
Hop. Hover over there. Grab and board. Now we have jab. And I think I take Bill with me too. Grab on. Okay. Now we have two brave astronauts in our lander. While Kerbin is disappearing. And this is the time for me to stop recording with the first episode. And yeah, once the sun goes up again. I'll be ready for landing. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first part of this multi-part mission. And as always, life and in color with all my mistakes. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you out there. My name is Matthias Weiss. Bye.